I tried this hairdo today and it obviously turned out a lot better than the one I filmed yesterday so I will make a tutorial for this at some point. Hey what's up guys welcome to today's video today I am going to share with you guys my top how many I don't know 16 <laughs> uh, tips on what to think about when you get your first tattoo ever. Number one has to do with the size and there are some pros of starting small, such as knowing what the pain feels like, you know how your body heals after ta a tattoo, you know how your body handles the ink, and all of those things. If you start off huge and all of those are negative, then that's not a good thing. But I'm also not saying don't do a big first tattoo. I did my entire thigh the first thing I did, so I'm not the one saying start off small, but I'm I wanted to share at least the pros of starting small. Number two is something that has to do with number one as well. Um, if you don't know what your pain tolerance is like, then don't start off with a huge painful area to cover. With that said, obviously every single person in the world has a different pain tolerance, so you can't really generalize. However, there are some areas of the body that are known to hurt more than others, such as stomach, chest, ribs, elbows, knees, areas like that. So maybe don't start off there if you don't know how you handle the pain of getting tattooed. Number three is always go to a tattoo artist who has done the kind of tattoo that you want before. Like I personally would never go to my realistic guy to get old school tattoos because usually they have their specific styles that they're really good at. So make sure you research the artist and check out their portfolio of what they've done before to make sure that's what you want. So you don't end up going to a skilled artist in one style, getting something else from them and not being happy with the result. And unless you have proof that the shady tattoo artist's work is amazing and have a bunch of friends who vouch for them and they're like, oh my god, this person is amazing and cheap, then just don't. Tattoos really are investments and good tattoos do cost money. That's the harsh truth of it. And obviously, you know this is coming, and this video wouldn't be complete without me telling you to be 100% sure that this is something you can stand for in 10, 20, 50 years from now. But the truth is that we can never guarantee that. We can never ever guarantee that we will like what we have today in 50 years. And that's the truth. So instead, I'm just gonna share with you guys how I think about it. I wanted to get a tattoo representing, symbolizing one of my favorite bands. Instead of getting the logo, I got a bird with the lyrics to the song that I like most from the band. And even the song lyrics for me is crossing the line of a little bit too specific, but uh, another example is I wanted tattoos to symbolize and represent my family and my loved ones. So instead of getting their names, their faces, their birth dates tattooed on me, I got a ship and a lighthouse on my thighs. So that's how I think about it. I'm not at all judging people who get birth dates or logos or anything like that. It's just that for me, the odds that I will dislike something a little bit more vague and symbolic is it, it decreases compared to if I had a logo of a band. I did decrease the risk of disliking something that's symbolic rather than very obvious and specific, if that makes sense. But if you want a logo or birth dates or your boyfriend's name, you do you. And of course, only you know what you really want on your body, but please please listen to your tattoo artist. If they say that something just will not make a good tattoo, that's a sign that they actually know what they're doing. They're not saying that to fuck with you or to mess up anything. They're saying it because they don't want to create a tattoo that won't look nice and have you walking away from their parlor with something crappy that could have been great if you altered it a little bit, maybe size-wise, maybe change some details. Trust them to know what they're talking about because that's what you pay them for. You pay them to know their shit. And I've talked about this before, so I won't go into it too much, but being inspired by other people's tattoos is perfectly fine, but copying another tattoo is never, ever okay. And if you go to an artist that agrees to copy someone else's work, then fucking run and never look back. Unless you want to give the artist 100% creative freedom, it really helps to bring a sketch that you've made yourself. You don't have to be good at drawing or anything. You can just sketch something up 
or you can bring reference pictures of their previous tattoos that they've made that you kind of want something similar to or other people's tattoos just to explain in a better way than using words what you want. For me, when I go back, revisit tattoo artists and I know exactly how they work, what they do, that they're amazing at it, I just give them the freedom of interpreting what I say in their own way. So I just go like, I want this and blah blah blah, something like this, I don't know, you figure something out. And that gives them the freedom to make something creative and awesome in their own style. So it depends on what you want to do. If you want something very specific, then make sure you bring good reference pictures and a sketch or just make sure you're good at explaining because you need to explain your thoughts to another human being. So it's finally D-Day, oh my god! Make sure you've gotten enough sleep, that you haven't been out partying and drinking alcohol the night before, and that you have a good meal before getting tattooed, because all these things will help you handle the pain a little bit better. Painkillers and alcohol thins out your blood a lot, which can make it a hassle for the artist when they're tattooing, because a lot of blood makes it difficult to see what's going on. However, some people naturally bleed more than others. When it comes to shaving, the artist will most likely shave the area you are getting tattooed, because most parts of our bodies have small, small hairs and they will shave it. And I usually just let the artist shave it, unless it's on a part that I normally shave on a regular basis, because you will have to wait until the tattoo is healed before shaving again. So like if I'm getting my legs tattooed, I just go shave my entire legs just so I have them shaved while the tattoo is healing. But like if it's arms, chest, stomach, whatever, I just let them shave it because I don't, I don't care. This is one of the most important things to remember and that is do not, do not be shy. If there's something that you do not like about the tattoo, then speak up. If there's a detail you don't like, if you don't like the entire design, if you don't like the placement of the tattoo, you have to speak up. Because if you don't, then it'll be there forever and you don't want a crooked tattoo on your body. If it looks crooked to you, then say something. You have to do that because you don't want shyness to end up fucking up your tattoo. My point is, speak up. Just always speak up. However, I mean, it's okay to ask questions during the session, but do not backseat drive. You're paying them to do their job, so there's no need for you to do it for them. And really long sessions, if your first one is turning out to be really long, it can get a little bit boring to just sit there and take the pain, so if you want to, then bring a friend along to keep it company, and this will also help if you're a little bit nervous about getting your tattoo done. However, just do not bring your entire entourage because it's kind of disrespectful and it can get really annoying for the rest of the whole studio if there are a lot of people there. But one friend is always okay to bring along. And as you obviously know by now, after everyone telling you, it will hurt. But just make sure that you're sitting still while getting tattooed. You do not want to be moving around, twitching, being really annoying because that will just delay the process so much and it will make the tattoo artist kind of unsure how to do the tattoo because you might move and it might slow the whole process down so much. When I was getting my chest done, my legs were like moving, my stomach was moving, my arms were moving, but my chest was still because I didn't want to fuck up the tattoo, but it hurt so bad that I couldn't lie still, but I just made sure that she can work without problem on my chest and it's not moving. When I get tattoos, they always scab and finish scabbing within the week of getting the tattoo, but you have to be prepared to care for it about two to three weeks after getting it. And there are different seasons that might be better or worse to get tattooed, depending on where you live as well. In Sweden, for example, like late spring, early fall is probably the best because, well, I get tattooed all year round, I don't really care about this stuff, but the reason is because you don't want to burn yourself in the sun, you don't want to expose the tattoo to too much sun in the beginning, and also you should kind of be able to wear clothes that do not cover up the tattoo, which is really difficult in the winter time. I tattooed my thighs in freaking November, so wearing jeans over newly tattooed legs is not a good idea. Some people do it anyway, but it's not just so you know, for their first tattoo, don't expose it to too much sun, don't wear too tight clothes over it, so just you do the math. And last but not least, visible tattoos will indeed result in questions about them. You will be asked about them, you will be judged because of them, and people will always judge you for having tattoos. That's just the way the world works today. But don't let people shit on you just because of the choices you've made. I think tattoos are beautiful pieces of art and they really do make us unique and beautiful in our own ways. 
So these were my 1 billion tips on what to think about when getting your first tattoo. I'm sure there are a bunch of other things you should think about, but these are the things that come to mind when I when I think about the process. If you have any questions, then leave a comment below. I will try to answer them for you to the best of my ability. The Swedish word of the day is first. The Swedish word of first is första. Första. Don't forget to subscribe and check out my links below to keep up to date on everything that I do. Until next time, have a super cool one.